So the nutritional neuropathies, and uh, I'll go ahead and pop up a, uh, a slide here for you to check out on neuro nutritional neuropathies. Now, the slide you're looking at is not comprehensive. It does not contain all the ones I'm going to talk about tonight. So if you have your notepad handy, you, you, you're going to want to take some notes because we're going to dive pretty deep into this. But there are a number of nutritional neuropathies. And so I'll start off with one of the most common. So I'm going to put a star by it because by far it is clinically one of the most common forms of neuropathy that we see, vitamin B12 deficiency. Now, all these are deficiency neuropathies unless I specify otherwise, meaning that it's you not having enough of the nutrient, not a toxicity of the nutrient. So there are examples that I'll give tonight where, where a nutrient toxicity could lead to neuropathy, but these are deficiency unless I state otherwise. So vitamin B12 deficiency can cause a degradation of the brain. It can cause a degradation of the spinal cord and, and it generally manifests, it can manifest as a form of MS multiple sclerosis. So if you've heard of multiple sclerosis, which is a demyelinating disease of the central nervous system, B12 deficiency can cause that. And one of the reasons why is that B12 is necessary for myelin. The myelin sheath, which is the coating or the insulation that surrounds your, your nerves, that's, um, that myelin is an insulator. And so if the insulation is gone, then the nerve, when it's trying to transmit its electrical impulse or energy, it, the energy or the, the impulse doesn't make it, doesn't get quite as far as it should. And so we get shorts, kind of quote unquote shorts in the wire, so to speak. And so B12 deficiency will cause that. Now this typically manifests early onset. So if we're talking about really early on as numbness and tingling. So before MS is developed, most people don't wake up one day and have all the symptoms of multiple sclerosis. They generally will manifest first with numbness and tingling. And this typically occurs in the feet, numbness and tingling in the feet, toes can sometimes also be the, the fingers. So think toes and fingers. These are common neuropathies that um, can be B12 induced. So again, if you've had, if you've been to the neurologist and you've had, you know, the brachial plexus and the disc ruled out and you've had um, different kind of nerve impingement or entrapment syndromes ruled out like carpal tunnel syndrome or medium nerve syndrome or, uh, or, or cubital tunnel syndrome, some of these other kind of common neurological impingement syndromes, if those have been ruled out, you need to start asking your doctor about B12. Now, one of the biggest problems I see with B12 uh, neuropathy is when you go to the doctor, they, they generally will test your serum and serum is a bad idea because you can get a lot of false negative with serum B12 testing, meaning serum B12 levels might look normal, but you're actually still vitamin B12 deficient. And so better markers for B12 deficiency would be something called MMA, methylmalonic acid. And you can also have another chemical tested called homocysteine which is an indirect marker that can indicate that you have a B12 deficiency. But number one, the best way to look for it is lymphocyte proliferation. This is a specialized type of white blood cell test that um, can help you understand whether or not you have B12 deficiency inside the cells themselves. So B12 deficiency, numbness and tingling, the feet, toes, fingers, hands, generally, the numbness and tingling doesn't radiate. So it's important, you kind of, if you're trying to think about whether or not you should suspect this, it generally doesn't start from the top and radiate down. It generally starts here or it starts in the feet. It doesn't radiate down the legs. So again, a lot of your neuropathies that are, that are what we talked about earlier, space occupying lesion or something is pressing on the nerve, those types of neuropathies tend to radiate. So they tend to start up up higher and then radiate down the arms or legs, whereas this is one of those that generally starts in the feet or starts lower in the in the in the hands themselves. So um, B12 deficiency very very common. Now, B vitamins in general cause there are a lot of B vitamins that can cause neuropathy. Um, you know, we'll go down the list here: vitamin B1, vitamin B2, vitamin B3, vitamin B6. Um, we actually I skipped one: vitamin B5. And folate, we'll just add folate in up here. These can all cause neuropathy. So every single one of these deficiencies of B vitamins can cause neuropathy for different reasons. Now, some of them are more well understood than others, at least uh, from a from a you know physiology standpoint. Folate deficiency can mimic all the things that happen with a B12 deficiency. So these two have a lot of similar functions and, and play together, so to speak. So folate deficiency can cause the same type of numbness, tingling in the feet or hands or fingers. And so 
This is a very, very common deficiency. As a matter of fact, it's so, such a common deficiency. This is why when you, when you look at food today, processed food is fortified with folic acid. Now, I don't agree with that. I don't agree that folic acid is a synthetic derivative of folate, it, which is, you know, there's some research studies showing that folic acid itself is a carcinogen can contribute to cancer. So I don't really recommend eating processed foods that are fortified with folic acid. But it's such a, my point is it's such a common deficiency that the government stepped in and started fortifying foods to prevent neurological types of problems, especially in pregnant women um, giving, giving birth to, to new babies. Neural tube defects is, is an example of a nerve, uh, uh, of a, a poor development of the nervous system that can lead to a number of problems like cleft palate, um, et cetera. So folate, uh, very commonly a cause of neuropathy. Vitamin B1 deficiency, also known as beriberi, um, causes what's called a wet neuropathy. Um, and so this, this type of neuropathy is, is generally because beriberi affects the production of something called acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter and you need acetylcholine. Um, you need acetylcholine so that your nervous system can communicate to your muscles and your nervous system can communicate to your organs and your other tissues. And so a de long-term deficiency of, berry or, uh, of vitamin B1 can lead to acetylcholine depletion, meaning you don't make the neurotransmitter necessary for most of your nerves to communicate. And so neuropathy can begin to develop. You've also got vitamin B2 deficiency, and this can cause demyelinization as well. So demyelin of the nervous system, just like vitamin B12. So B2 and B12, but there's also another type of uh, suspicion behind vitamin B2 in that you need vitamin B2 to produce glutathione. And glutathione is one of the most powerful antioxidants in the body. And as an antioxidant, uh, it helps to protect and preserve nerve tissue. So um, two different ways potentially that vitamin B2 deficiency could cause it. Now B3 generally doesn't cause this type of neuropathy. B3 deficiency we'll call it more of a central problem because it leads to kind of think of it as cognitive decline, right? So cognitive function versus, versus numbness, tingling, and that kind of thing, you might get memory problems or word recall issues. You know, dementia is a late stage pellagra, which is what vitamin B3 deficiency is. It's called pellagra. That's the name of the disease, but it causes cognitive decline and that's a form of neuropathy too. So sometimes when we're talking about neuropathy, you know, we're talking about pain and numbness and tingling and that kind of neuropathy, but this is also a form of centralized. Remember I said central and peripheral neuropathy. This is a form of central neuropathy. Then you've got B6. Now B6 is unique because B6 deficiency can cause neuropathy, um, but so can a B6 toxicity. So some of you may have taken B vitamins. And if you've ever taken too much B6 and ever experienced um, numbness and tingling begin, agitation can happen as well. So mood swings, agitation, numbness and tingling in the hands and feet, very common as a toxicity. Be too much B6. It's actually really the only B vitamin that has any known toxicity symptoms is vitamin B6. So if you're taking high doses of vitamin B6, generally upwards of 200 milligrams a day for long periods of time, then you can run the risk of developing a vitamin B6 neuropathy from a toxicity perspective. So again, this one can, can create neuropathy both ways, whether you're deficient in it or whether you're toxic in it. And then vitamin B5, now this one's really unique in the way that it presents. This is oftentimes referred to as the burning foot neuropathy. So if you get burning in your feet, that's kind of a hallmark or a classic of vitamin B5 deficiency. So that burning foot or burning feet neuropathy or nerve pain, uh, is very, very common in vitamin B5 deficiency. So again, your B vitamins as a family are very, very important for neurological function. And so a deficiency in literally any one of them can contribute to neurological types of symptoms. So you've got to be careful. Again, if you're struggling with a mysterious neuropathy and don't know why, we go back to testing, right? Just like I said here, this is for B12 up here, but you could, we could, we could just put a little star by lymphocyte proliferation because this can be used to measure all of these. The only thing that you can't do with lymphocyte proliferation is measure for a vitamin B6 toxicity. And for that you'd run, in this case, this is where you would run a, a serum B6 level to see if the level's too high. And generally the only time we're gonna get a B6 toxicity issue is if not if somebody 
um, naturally eats foods high in B6. It's because somebody is supplementing with, you know, pharmaceutical doses of B6 over a longer period of time. And that's what's creating it. So again, this is only going to occur uh, if you're supplementing. So testing serum to see if the supplement's pushing it way too high is something that can be measured to help you rule in or out a toxicity of vitamin B6. So again, let's, let's take the scenario here. Maybe you've been supplementing with high doses of B vitamins for a really long time and you started to develop a neuropathy and you look at your formulation and it's got high levels of vitamin B6 in it. This is where you might suspect that B6 toxicity versus say a deficiency of some of these other things. So those are your, you know, your classic neuropathy uh, B vitamin deficiencies that, you know, that, that you can manifest. Now there's other vitamins, there's other minerals that can also contribute to neuropathy. And so I think we'd be remiss to not mention some of these. One of them is vitamin E. Now vitamin E has been really well researched as a cause of neuropathy. Uh, so vitamin E deficiency can lead to, and this has to do for vitamin E is, is, is a strong, potent antioxidant. And so some nerve damage is caused as a result of pro-oxidation. So damage and inflammation that causes oxidation. So you need antioxidants. So if your vitamin E is, is low and you're getting exposure to oxidation or a lot of oxidants, um, you can start to develop a, a vitamin E neuropathy as a result of that. So vitamin E, very, very important. Again, one of those that can be tested for can be checked. Additionally, uh, this another really quite common one is copper, copper deficiency. So copper, just like vitamin B2 and vitamin B12, copper helps produce the myelin sheath. Now there's two roles that copper plays. One is in its production of the coating around your nerves. The other is as an antioxidant. Copper runs a system in your body called superoxide dismutase um, or SOD. SOD is, a, is an antioxidant system. It's a very potent antioxidant system. Again, it preserves the integrity of your nerve tissue. So between the production of myelin and as an antioxidant, copper deficiency can contribute to neurological symptoms as well. So again, these are some of your common ones. Hey, and if you missed the earlier part of this series, click right here so you can go back and get caught up. The information there might be critical to helping you on your path to better health. And as always, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe for updates below. Have a great day.